I came to the school as a headmaster in November 1973, following the retirement of Harry Taylor, to whom I must pay tribute and whose friendship I valued over the years. I'm told that on one occasion I announced to the mixed assembly that girls must not walk more than two abreast down St. Helen's Gate. <laughs> Perhaps this was not quite as bad as the notice for which I was not responsible which appeared in the girls' cloakroom at a previous school, stating, girls must remove all their clothes at 4 p.m. when the builders are coming in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was uh, sitting there with a glass of red in one hand and a book in the other, as you do at 70, and the telephone rang, and this guy said, this is Richard Taylor and your heart sinks, isn't it? Because you know very well that you're going to have a lousy meal because you've got to speak after it. What I want you to do, he said, is crack a few jokes for a few minutes and then speak about the school. I thought he's got the wrong K. I'm Doug K. There's Gordon K. There's Danny K. There's Peter K. He's got the wrong one. And anyway, if my wife were here, she'd stand up and say you can't tell jokes anyway. So I won't tell any jokes. It's... <laughs> Was that a joke? Uh, two more serious matters. I first entered the portals of King James's school 48 years and one month ago to be greeted in the study by Harry Taylor, to whom I asked, posed the question, Harry, uh, Harry, oh. Sir, <laughs> Mr. Taylor, do you think I should wear a gown? He said, yes, Mr. Bush, otherwise we'll never distinguish you from the, from the pupils. In the, in the very early days, I remember a young lad tripping along the corridor there, and I said, boy? I said, what is your name? He said, Norman. I said, Norman what? He said, Norman Pearson. I said, Norman Pearson what? He said, I haven't got another name. I said, when I speak to you, your name is Norman Pearson, sir. A few days later, same lad tripping down the same corridor. Boy, where are you going? He said, Norman Pearson, sir. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, ex-pupils, teachers and honoured guests. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I'm especially honoured to be speaking to you on this extra special occasion one of which I'm sure will be close to the hearts of many old Ombuians. We are also here to celebrate the 400th anniversary of our school being granted the Royal Charter by King James in 1608. And looking around the room, I can see from the wistful expressions that many of you can remember that very day. <laughs> I think what's absolutely brilliant about this school, and I love this school, it's the best school that I've ever heard taught in in all my teaching career. It's my fifth school now, but it's so different from everybody else, everywhere else I've been. One thing I've noticed is the love of the school that everybody has been there. They always love it. You can talk to people, I've talked to many people tonight, and they've only got fantastic memories of it. Because a lot of you were lucky to serve under two fantastic head teachers. The main two head teachers, are some of the famous head teachers in Yorkshire. We're having a week this week like no other week before. We're about halfway through now, I think. It's uh, Founders Day tomorrow and the Royal Visit, where we get to meet the Duke of Gloucester on Tuesday. Um, the Society, over the last two years, has moved into the 21st century with a computer database to die for. <coughs> computer database to die for. Email communication, e-marketing, and a website which is absolutely fun. I've spoken at many dinners, but I've never spoken to an audience of this size or to an audience with which I've felt such an emotional bond. 
It's a real roller coaster ride for me tonight and has been for the last few days. There are people in this room that I have a very deep love and respect for, many, many of them. But as you will understand, I also have a very personal, emotional link with tonight. My father spoke at the 1958 dinner in the town hall. And if I paraphrase a little sentence from Gerald Hinsley's wonderful book, those who don't see his spirit here are simply not looking. I feel him on my shoulder. He's saying, for God's sake, lad, don't make a mess of it. <laughs> um, I, I had to correct uh, something that um, I think it was uh, Mr. Bush said that I was from Lancashire. Well, I was born, it's true, I was born uh, in Lancashire. I was born in Cleveland's in, in Lancashire, just outside uh, Blackpool. But uh, I was only there for a week. My mother had been sent up there by my father because I was born in 1944 and uh, our house got bombed. Even in the womb, I was, uh, seemed to hear the sounds of bombs. And um, my father got very upset and uh, insisted that she should go, she should take a, a train from Euston Station, which has had a, a certain influence in my life, as I'll tell you, um, and uh, that I should come, uh, she should come northwards with me, eight and a half months pregnant. And uh, the money ran out at Blackpool. She went and got a cab went to the Queen's Hydro in, uh, in, in, in Cleveland, and that's where I was born. I haven't been back there since. I promise you, I haven't, I've only been back to Lancashire about twice. Is that okay? That, can I? Yeah. Um, I'm a southerner. I know you'd much prefer that. Um, Instead, it is to be pursued in view of the special life, as he writes, that has to be lived with the express purpose of forming a person fit to live it. Those are noble words, and that, it seems to me, is what we celebrate here on this historic day. That is what King James Armandry is about. Thank you. 